Hi everyone. Welcome back to Pets and Paws channel. In today's video we are going to talk about a new puppy haul. During this exciting time, it can be quite overwhelming when getting a puppy. There are so many items to choose from, it's hard to know where to start. I have created a guide that will help you. But before we start, please make sure that you are subscribed and let's jump right into the video. So, what to do before you pick up your new dog or puppy? Register with a vet practice. Signing up with a nearby vet practice is best, so you don't have to travel far for help. Be sure to ask whether the practice provides out-of-hours care, or whether another clinic covers this for them. Check your dog is chipped. All dogs over the age of 8 weeks must be microchipped by law. If you're buying from a breeder, they should get the puppy microchipped, and ensure you have the database contact details. As soon as you have your new dog or puppy, you'll need to contact the database company and give them your details. Get pet insurance. A good pet insurance policy can help you get the right care for your dog. Insurance policies differ in what types of treatment they cover. Plan for being away. Have a plan for who'll look after your puppy or dog if you're going out, away, or to work. You can start teaching your dog how to spend time alone from when they're a puppy, but they may take a while to adjust. Setting up a dog-friendly home. It's time to pup-proof your home. To make things safe for your furry friend, lock away or throw away anything that could be harmful to them. Move out of reach objects that they could chew. Ensure they can't reach dangerous items such as electrical leads. Lock away, or get rid of, any toxic plants or substances. Once that's done, it's time to set up your dog's eating, sleeping and resting areas. The feeding area should ideally be separate. If you're getting a puppy, it's helpful if one of their resting areas is close to an external door. This makes house training easier. The rest area, including a cozy den, should be in a quiet place. This should be away from external doors, busy areas and the direct sight of a window. Explain to family and friends that when your dog is there, they shouldn't be disturbed. If there are areas of your house you'd like to block off, consider installing baby gates. If you have a garden that your dog can access, you'll need to make that dog safe too. Remove toxic plants and ensure that sharp tools and harmful substances are locked safely away. Buy the basics. Now, let's dive into each item on the checklist below. Dog bed. Your pup will love having a comfortable place to call their own within your home. I recommend finding a dog bed that is big enough for your pup to grow into. Support is also a huge factor, so make sure you find a bed with memory foam or other sturdy support. To make your life easier and your house smell cleaner, Get a dog bed that has a removable cover. You'll want to wash the bed at least every couple weeks or so. Chew toys. Puppies love chewing, especially during their teething stage. If you don't want them chewing up your shoes then you'd better get some high quality chew and tug toys. Chew toys are also great for keeping your puppy's growing mind stimulated and even helping to clean their teeth. The more you interact and play with your puppy, the happier they will be. On top of chew toys, you'll want a good toy to use for a game of tug. This will be very helpful in training sessions. Toys for fetch. Exercise is extremely important for a dog's health, but shouldn't be overdone for young puppies. Playing fetch can be the perfect amount of exercise for young puppies. Dog food. Your puppy will arrive from the breeder with some sort of an established diet. It's advised your pup should stay on this diet for at least a week so there's not too much change. Sometimes they are sent home with a not so nutritious or healthy diet. Most dogs like variety, eating the same thing day in and day out can make dogs go off their food just like the rest of us. I always recommend adding fresh foods like meat, fish, veg and fruit to their diets. Always ensure you go for a complete puppy food as these are specially formulated for your puppy's development. Edible chews. Puppies chew a lot and it's reinforcing. It's important to provide them outlets to help soothe those aching gums. Always aim for natural products and avoid raw hide as these often contain glue, and some dogs find them hard to swallow. There are wooden chews that crumble to save your furniture, and help to prevent your puppy getting splinters, but supervision is always important in case they bite large bits off which could be a choking hazard. Be aware some treats have a minimum age restriction as puppies' tummies are delicate. Always supervise initially. Treats. It's easy to fall into the trap of only using treats you find in shops. More often than not the best kind of treats are natural fresh options from your own fridge. Things such as broccoli, peas, carrots, these are great frozen for puppies, fruit in moderation, meat and fish are all better options. For training try and find what your dog likes the best by doing a preference test. Check the back of the packets for the age, and the softer the better for training. 
Sometimes it is more convenient getting shop-bought treats. Be mindful treats should only make up 10% of your puppy's diet and ensure you check what age they are suitable for. Harness. There are a number of different types you will need to wait until your pup arrives so you can measure them. You want to always look for fixed point Y-shaped harnesses, do not buy ones that state they are non-pull. Many puppies and dogs have poor fitted harnesses making it uncomfortable to walk. If they're finding it painful every time they walk it can then start to become something they fear. Each dog is slightly different so it should fit without rubbing, and should allow full range of movement in their legs not restricting the shoulders. It's crucial to get your puppy liking the harness before you associate it with the scary big wide world. Rewarding them for voluntarily putting their head through and dropping treats on the floor when doing the girth. You want them to come forward towards the harness wanting to put it on. Play with them as soon as the harness is on. Keep doing this until they learn to love the process. Be sure not to rush your pup at any stage. Yes puppies let you shove anything on them but that does not mean they are comfortable. Over time they can start seeing it as a negative and become fearful, or worse aggressive at your approach. Once your pup is comfortable with it, go out in the garden, walking with lead and harness, no pulling on the lead just encouraging them with you, introducing the lead positively too. Short and long lead leash for training. This is one that way too many new pup parents leave off their checklist. A long lead. In addition to your regular leash, you will want a long lead leash for training sessions and for places like parks and on hikes. Anything over 20 feet is great, just get enough to let your dog roam while still being in control. Pen. If you decide you are going to pen your puppy and if your breeder has used them it's a bonus, it should be a safe place, not somewhere you send them for punishment. I recommend the strong metal ones rather than flimsy, plastic or wooden ones are good options too. Do not get the material ones as often dogs can end up tipping them and then panic as it's rolling around the room with them in it. It's important to introduce it positively, do not force them to enter their pen hoping they will get used to it, this will only distress them. Let them explore it and have everything they need in there. Have enough room for your pup's very comfy bed, leaving a space where they can lay where it's cool too. Have a blanket over one section, if they like being under something, a space for puppy pads, toys, shoes, food and water. Otherwise they may be forced to use the toilet in their own bed area which is unnatural, distressing for them and can cause urinary tract infections due to holding their urine for too long. This area should be where all the wonderful things are and a place they love to be. Have a side and front opening too. This is useful to get the puppy acquainted with being inside the pen without shutting the doors. Close the gate for very short periods, placing treats in after, opening before they try to get out or get distressed building the time up. Dog ID tags. Hopefully, it never happens to your pup, but dogs often run away or get lost. You can make custom ID tags. It's typically best to include your phone number, address, and an email address. Bowls for food and water. No matter what you feed your dog, you'll want a dog bowl that is easy to clean and of course, big enough for your pup's food. Depending on how big your dog is going to be, you may find yourself refilling your dog bowl every half hour. Water is a vital part of a dog's health. So make sure to keep it fresh and available for your new puppy. Nail clippers. Keeping your dog's nails trimmed keeps scratches on your skin to a minimum. Not only that but if a dog's nails are too long it can cause pain over time. So, keep your dog's nails trimmed and use a proper dog nail clipper. Shampoo. We all love a cuddly puppy, but one that smells bad, not so much. How often you wash your dog depends on their breed, but a general rule of thumb is to give them a good bath at least once a month. Poop bags and scooper. Everybody poops, especially little puppies. So, get yourself a roll of poop bags for when you go on walks or to the park with your pup. You can even get poop bag holders that hook onto your leash, a must-have for every puppy parent. Dog toothbrush and toothpaste. Bad oral hygiene can cause painful and expensive problems down the road for your pup. Brushing your puppy's teeth is a simple task that you won't regret, because who doesn't love fresh puppy breath? Just like your toothbrush, you shouldn't share your toothpaste with your pup. Actually, many human kinds of toothpaste include xylitol which is toxic for your pup. So, go buy some toothpaste that's just for your pup. Brush OR comb. Whether you have a dog that sheds or doesn't, you'll want a nice comb or brush to keep up with their grooming. You should comb your dog's hair every few days, especially if you want to minimize shedding in short-haired pups. First aid kit. Hopefully you will never need it but it's really useful to have it. And the last thing you need to do is to pick up your pooch. Getting a puppy or dog can be both exciting and tiring, as there's so much to think about in those first few days and weeks. 
I hope my checklist will help you to be prepared for a new fur member of your family. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. See you in the next videos.